What's up YouTube? We're back here again at the House of Horsepower. The last time you saw this car was the first time we started it, but we had an issue. And Clayton went ahead and pulled the tranny and found the issue. Once he had the transmission out of the way, he started the car and you could see it was leaking quite a bit from the rear main seal. Took the flex plate off, started it up, saw the leak was really bad. Uh, took the rear cover off and we were wondering how this was happening because it looked like it was leaking out of like the bolts that hold the rear cover on underneath there. So we were scratching our heads, kind of wondering what was up. And then uh, on closer inspection of this oh, rear cover, uh, yeah, all kinds of theories, but we uh, put this rear main seal in backwards. For an LS, it is supposed to be the opposite of this. For almost any other small block Chevy conventional engine I've heard, you want it like this because the oil goes in here and the pressure kind of seals it against the crank. But uh, you don't do that with an LS, that's backwards. So Clayton just finished uh, putting the other rear cover we had with the seal the right way in there and it didn't leak. So it's time to put this transmission back in, get to starting this again and do some tuning. <laughs> Wow. You want me to just hold the jack then? Pull up and back. <laughs> <laughs> we need a, yeah, something to fucking. I guess we just gotta keep fucking. <laughs> Putting wood on there? Where's that other piece of wood? We could, yeah. Well, I don't know, we'll just keep getting another piece of wood until we can get it on the jack. You know what? Hold on, I got this one. Just the important thing is someone needs to hold the jack this time. We probably could have had it the first time, but the jack was sliding away. Ooh. That's basically like a transmission jack. Hold the jack with one hand now, and I'll give it a good shove. Oh god! How's that? This one went into by the feel of it. Yeah, I think this one's in. There we go, guys. Installing a transmission without a hoist. Take fucking 30 for us. All right, so it's up in there. Uh, we got the bell housing bolts done. Clayton got the cross member back on. Next thing to do is the converter bolts. On this car, we got a bolt. We got two washers that go in between the converter and the flex plate for the proper spacing and nuts. On the S15, which I was working on uh, in that other video there, it unfortunately doesn't have the bolt and nut system. You can only get into it from the back here. So you just have a bolt and uh, the converter stripped. So if we did this with my truck, that would solve the issue, but then I'd have to get a new bell housing, transmission, blah, blah, blah. We're just gonna weld it. Yeah, on the S15, I think I'm just gonna tack weld Loctite and tack weld the bolts. But luckily, this one's a lot easier, so I'm gonna get to work putting these in. Now 
that we got the oil leak fixed, we're trying to do some tuning and get this thing idling uh, a little better. So we're in the scanner right now. I just hit record, it's connecting. Unless I forgot to turn the key on, which I did not. So we're connected, you can see it's recording stuff already. O2s are, you know, there and stuff. Anyways, let's see how many clicks before it starts this time. <laughs> Their fuel at idle was, when we started, it was around 11, 11 and a half. I took some away, it got to about 12, high 11s. Now it looks like we're around 13 for the moment. It'll probably fatten up a bit once it runs for a few seconds. But basically all I'm doing is taking away fuel from the VE table right now. Uh, this time I did, uh, I multiplied it by 0 0.85, so I took away 15% from the entire table. That table was set up for the six liter that used to be in here, so it's gonna need some volumetric efficiency removed, obviously, but looks like we're getting closer. It's hanging around 13, 12, five now. I mean, with the cam, I'm not sure how close I'll be able to get to 14.7 steady at idle, but this is a lot better. It doesn't smell like fuel now, so. Get better, yeah. yeah. Just have to do some more tweaking. The wide band in the car is the best way to see, but you can even see with the uh, O2s here, how they're staying more around 800, not really going over 800, dropping a bit. Uh, it's gotten a bit richer now. So yeah, we're gonna mess around with this some more. Although it was running and it sounded quiet and everything, this oil pressure gauge is still showing like only 25 PSI when it's running like cold or warm, which obviously is not good. Uh, we purged a line and uh, try to get all the air. You can still, there's a bit of air in there left. Maybe this thing has a leak, I don't know. But it's a bit concerning, and the last time we had it running, it sounded like it was ticking a bit from the lifters again, because we have the hole in the firewall. You probably can't see it, but there's a hole back there to get the transmission bolts, and through there we could hear it a bit. So that's a little concerning. The gauge we thought might just be faulty, but it was actually making lifter noise again. Like, holy fuck, boys. That would be really bad. So we're about done tuning for today. I gotta go for dinner, and then we're going cruising. So uh, yeah, let's continue this elsewhere. And we're back, out on uh, Portage Avenue. Cruise night now. Just stopped here to get some gas. Rob said he had to get some gas, but now uh, we lost Rob. We don't know where Rob is, so hopefully. Nothing went wrong with the Nova because he just put the transmission back in, so maybe he heard something and turned around. Hopefully not. Hopefully uh, he just forgot his hat. His hat? His hat. So we're going to go cruising, maybe show you guys some cars. Apparently Rob went home and swapped vehicles quickly, so something wrong with the Nova's transmission that he didn't fix, I guess, which sucks. Brought his coat road tonight, convertibling it up. It's still like 30 degrees here. Pretty what? hot. It's pretty hot. hot yeah. So I was just saying. It's hot. It's hot. It's Seems like all we're doing lately is swapping trannies in and out of vehicles. It's like at Clayton's earlier and here too, it's the same thing going on. Yep. The heavy one especially here, the 4L80. Hot rodding ain't always peaches and cream. No, yeah, that's for sure. But uh, the reward is, is usually worth it. The end product is usually worth the work, usually. Unless the work never stops, I guess. Exactly. This is our own choice. So, <laughs> so I think that's going to be uh, an end for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, thanks for subscribing, all you subscribers. If you're new, subscribe. Drop a like. Share with your friends. Click that notification bell. Yeah, make sure you do that so you know when our live streams come on every Wednesday around 8 or 9 Central Time. Yeah. Check you later. Check you later.